Good morning, Highlands friends. Right now it's Monday of Holy Week, and I was thinking that it was probably about 10 years ago that I first started making cinnamon buns for our Highlands United Easter Sunday brunch. Um, I wish that I could make them for you this year for Easter Sunday, but I can't. But what I can do is show you how to make your own. This recipe has been passed around the congregation many times, and I know some of you have been making your own cinnamon buns for a while now. But for those who haven't, I thought that I would show you the steps involved in making them. It's really the easiest possible bread recipe ever and um, you too can have cinnamon buns for Easter Sunday morning. So welcome to my kitchen in Seashelt and uh, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do is to take a quarter of a cup of warm water. The water should be what's usually called baby bath water warm, so not too hot and not too cold. And just put that in a fairly large bowl. Now into that water, you're going to add two teaspoons of yeast. You can use regular yeast or traditional um, or fast rise yeast. It doesn't really matter. And both will actually take about the same length of time to do. You're gonna use two teaspoons. Um, although some recipes call for three teaspoons and it won't make a whole lot of difference. So you're just gonna sprinkle that on the water and just let it sit there for a few minutes. Next step, while the yeast is sitting in the water, is to take one and a half cups of, again, of warm water, not hot and not cold. And to that water, you're gonna add some more ingredients. So the first thing you're gonna do, now I'm not really very good at measuring, but for your sake, I'm gonna to measure today. Um, you take about one and a half teaspoons, whoops, <laughs> of salt. Okay, that was probably one and a quarter because my hand slipped. A little bit more of salt, mix that in. Um, two tablespoons of sugar. If you're using this recipe just to make plain bread, you can use less sugar or you can use honey or molasses, but for cinnamon buns, a couple of tablespoons of sugar is good. And the last thing you'll add to the water is some oil, or if you really want to take it up a notch, add a little bit of melted butter. But for today, today we'll use some vegetable oil. So two tablespoons of vegetable oil. And that's it. Stir it around. And now you're going to add all of this liquid mixture into your yeast mixture. Stir that for a minute just to make sure it's well blended. Okay, that's the complicated part. And now it's time to add the flour. The recipe calls for about four cups of flour. Usually what I do is I add two cups first, mix it into a smooth batter, and then I just gradually add another cup into the bowl and then the fourth cup I sprinkle on my counter and I'll add it in as we need the recipe. So two cups in first. And stir it up well. So you can see it's still pretty, um, pretty runny. So I'm going to add another cup of flour. and see if I can still mix that. Okay, that's getting quite a, quite a bit stiffer now. So I'm gonna take one more cup of flour. I'm gonna sprinkle a little in the bowl and I'm gonna put the rest on the counter, which I had cleaned thoroughly before I started to do this. I'm gonna mix the batter that's in the bowl a little bit more, try and get as much of the flour in as I can. And then I'm going to plop it all out on the counter.
Okay, so this is where you get your hands dirty. Scoop the batter off the spoon. And now we're going to start kneading the dough. So kneading isn't really complicated, but it is a little tricky to get the feel of it. Um, it involves moving the dough into a big clump and then folding it towards you and pushing it away from you and then turning it, adding more flour as you go. Uh, some people make the mistake of using their fingers to knead and what happens is that the dough sticks to your fingers and it gets really um, hard to work with. So use the palm of your hand when you're kneading. So fold it towards you, push it away and turn it. Fold towards, push away and turn. Now we're going to knead for anywhere from five to 10 minutes or as long as you feel like it. Um, just keep adding a bit of flour every time it starts to feel sticky. And um, it depends, the amount of flour you use sometimes depends on the temperature in your house or how much humidity there is outside. I'm not sure of all the science behind bread baking, but it's approximately four cups in total. You'll see that the cup that I sprinkled on the counter is almost gone now. Okay, I've been kneading for about um, four or five minutes. And you'll see that the dough is a fairly solid ball now. Um, if I put my finger in it, it'll start to spring back a little. And that's, it's kind of bouncy and it'll feel springy under your hands when you're kneading. Um, they say to knead dough until it's smooth and elastic. I pretty much knead it until it feels like it's bouncy and springy and um, you'll the more you do this the more you'll start to know what it should feel like for you so we have a nice clump of dough now and it's all ready to um, rise for the first time so we're going to put it in a, back in the bowl you don't need to wash your bowl out um, add a little bit of oil to the bottom of the bowl and just swirl it around. Put your lump of dough in there, cover it with the oil and flip it over. Now the top and the bottom are both oiled. And then you're gonna take a clean dish towel and rinse it in warm water, wring it out thoroughly and wrap the dough up in that. Okay, so I have my damp dish towel. I'm gonna to wrap it around the bowl. And now you get to go and do something else for about an hour and a half. Um, sometimes it takes about an hour to rise, sometimes as much as two hours. You're gonna put it in a warm but not hot place. So some of your ovens will have a proof setting on the oven. If so, then you can put it in the oven on proof. Um, you can also put it in the oven with the oven light on. That would keep it nice and toasty. Just make sure no one goes to turn the oven on when your dough is in there. Um, I've got a sunroom in my house that today it's nice and warm in there, so I think that's where I'm gonna put it to rise. And um, we'll leave it and I'll see you in an hour and a half. Okay, so it's about an hour and a half later and your bread dough will have risen now. Um, so first, before I do anything with the dough, I'm gonna get the pan ready. Um, I'm going to end up dividing the dough in half because we only have three of us in our house and we actually don't need 16 cinnamon buns. Um, so I'm just going to make one pan. So um, I line my pan with parchment paper first, at least on the bottom, but you don't have to if you don't have any. Just uh, if you don't have parchment paper, just spray it. And then um, to make it nice and gooey on the bottom, but not so that it's going to burn in the oven, um, I put a little bit of milk or cream. I had a little bit of cream left here. I put a little bit of milk in the bottom of the pan, uh, maybe kind of about that much. And then I take some brown sugar um, and some, I don't know how much, I'll see when we do this. This is about a quarter of a cup now. And I put that in the pan and then I mix it around with my hands. So now what you have is a nice little sugary paste on the bottom of the pan. 
So now my pan is ready to put the buns in. So I'm gonna put it aside for now. This is the fun part. If you have children at home, let them do this because it just feels nice. So your dough is now risen. It's probably doubled in, in size. And this is what's called punching it down. So you just take your hand and punch it down. And it deflates and dump it out of the bowl. So I, like I said, I'm gonna divide mine in half because I don't need all of that. The other half I can turn into a little loaf of bread or I can put it in the freezer, wrap it in saran and put it in the freezer, save it to make a pizza. That'll make one nice big pizza um, another night. Um, so I'm just gonna put that aside for now. And this part, I'm gonna turn into the cinnamon buns. So I've sprinkled some flour on my counter here. And now I'm gonna roll it out. And if you're a perfectionist, you'll try to make it look like a, a beautiful rectangle. Mine, I'm a perfectionist in some things, but not in this. So mine will be a, kind of a quirky shape. But you want it longer than it is wide. And I try to get at least six, maybe to eight inches of width. And stretch it with your hands if you need to. And some of it will stretch as you add the brown sugar and cinnamon to it. Okay, so you have a rectangle now. And uh, now's the time to add the toppings. So first of all, I've got a little bit of uh, butter here. I'm just going to soften it for a few seconds. And then we're going to spread um, butter first on the top and then sprinkle it with some brown sugar and then with some cinnamon. Sometimes you can use your hands to do this and it works better. I think in the past people have asked me, oh, well, how much butter do you put on? And actually, I don't know how much, maybe a couple of tablespoons. Um, depends how buttery you like it. Okay, then sprinkle it with some brown sugar. That's a quarter of a cup, but that's not quite enough. So we'll put some more on. Spread it around with your hands till it goes right into the corner. Okay, so now you've got butter, brown sugar, and now sprinkle it with as much or as little cinnamon as you like. Sometimes if I have a little half of an old apple around, um, I'll grate that and put it on top here. Or if I um, want to put raisins in it or nuts, you can add whatever you'd like to it at this point. Okay, and now, so now we've got the cinnamon, butter and brown sugar, and now is the time to roll it up. When I make these for the church, we multiply the recipe by uh, four times and it stretches the whole length of the island in the church kitchen and takes probably two people to roll it out. And you'll notice they'll stretch a bit once you've got it rolled out. Looks like a big giant snake. And now I just need to get a knife and I'm gonna cut this and we'll place it in the pan. I'm gonna cut the end off here. It's a little narrower than the rest and I'll cut this end off and then we'll use those later to fill any cracks. This pan that I've prepared may not be quite big enough, but we'll see. So I cut them so they're about an inch, just about an inch high and place them in the pan so that they're just about touching. I'm hoping I can get four in a row, yeah, so there's four close, fairly close together. Okay, so we managed to fit 16 in here, so there are 16 small um, buns, so that's, um, that's good. And now we don't need to cover them again, we're just going to let them rise for approximately mm, maybe 45 minutes, again until they're about doubled in size. If they're squished too close together, you'll find they'll rise up. If they're far apart, they'll rise, they'll rise out. 
Um, if you don't want to eat them or bake them right away, at this point, uh, when I make them for the church, I usually do this the night before, then I cover the pan with plastic wrap and I put it in the refrigerator overnight and then take them out in the morning, they'll have risen in the fridge, and then bake them in the morning for fresh hot cinnamon buns. So if you wanted to do these for Easter, you could make them on Saturday, put them in the fridge, and then Easter Sunday morning, you could bring them out and have cinnamon buns as you come to worship at Highlands. So I'm gonna leave these now for um, 45 minutes and then we'll take them the last step. Okay, this is about 50 minutes later and these have nicely filled out the, the square pan. They'll continue to rise for a little bit when I put them in the oven. So I'm gonna put them in the oven now at 375 degrees and leave them, I'll check them after about 20 minutes. They'll take about 20 to 30 minutes to get nice and golden brown. Okay, it's time to take them out of the oven now. So they're nice and golden brown. They've risen a little bit more and I'm going to leave them here to cool for a few minutes before I ice them and then they will be ready to eat. So now I'm just putting the finishing touches on these and the finishing touch is icing, of course. And um, this icing is made with a little bit of butter and cream cheese, some icing sugar, uh, vanilla, and a tiny bit of milk just to get the right consistency. Um, you can use whatever type of icing you like, but I'll put the ingredients for mine on the screen for you. And now they are ready to serve. And um, you can probably see on the bottom the nice gooey part where the milk and the brown sugar was. Um, so if you decide to make your own cinnamon buns, it would be really great if you took a picture of them and posted it on our Facebook page so we could see uh, how yours have turned out and if you have questions about this feel free to private message um, me or send me an email and I'm happy to talk you through this. Enjoy your cinnamon buns.